Hey, mathematicians. I am sad that we couldn't have our live math together today, but it just didn't make sense with all that was going on because today is going to be kind of um, a wrap-up day for what we've been talking about in math. So I know our learning intention says, as mathematicians, we will subitize and decompose numbers to 10. So at this point, you should be able to tell somebody else what the word subitize means and what it means to decompose, okay? Because both of those things are also down here under our success criteria. So right now, I want you to try and think about that word subitize and decompose. Can you explain it to somebody at your house or to someone nearby? Awesome. So subitize is when we see an amount of something and we're able to think quick and just know how many without counting. That's why our friend has these little lightning bolts around his head. He's able to look at like dots on a dice or somebody's fingers and know how many super quick, okay? And then when we decompose numbers, we understand how numbers are taken apart. And the way that we've been using um, decomposing numbers is with our number bonds. So this really helps us see what our whole is and how we can break it into parts, or we can put those parts back together to get to that whole or that total. So we've been saying part, part, total. So when you break your total into parts, that's when you are decomposing numbers. Okay, but we haven't touched on this one down here, which is kind of where I want to bring our focus to today. It says, use strategies to build my math fluency. And strategies are just anything that you practice or do in your brain or use to help yourself get better at math, right? And that fluency piece is what we talked a little bit about in reading, being more automatic at something, not having to sit there and solve it. So math fluency is this idea that your brain can do math more easily or more quickly using different strategies. And some people like one strategy, some people like a different strategy. It's whatever works for your math brain. So we're going to make a list of strategies here. i got to grab a marker that we've been talking about in math right now. See if you recognize some of these. Okay. So one of them is a number bond. So I'm not going to put it up here again because we already have it on our poster, but maybe number bonds really help your math brain understand what we've been talking about with part, part, total, okay? Another math strategy that we've seen is to fill things in in a 10 frame. Sometimes it helps boys and girls to visualize it with this top row and with a bottom row. Okay, so we've been talking about how a full top row will always be five, and then we can add on from there to make groups of six or seven. So one of our strategies is to put things in a 10 frame. So we'll go ahead and list that. Another one is counting on, okay? So we do this with a 10 frame, we do this with some subitizing, but when you count on, let me write it down, you don't start at one, okay? You see an amount of something, like maybe I'll take this amount, come up here, and instead of counting those dots, you just say five, and then you count on by saying six, seven, eight, right? So however many there are, you keep counting until you find the answer, but you don't start at one with counting on. You see an amount, you use that amount as your starting point, and then you keep counting up so it doesn't take as long. You're building that math fluency, okay? So we have a 10 frame, we have counting on, like saying five, six, seven, eight, okay? And we have draw a picture as a strategy. This has really been helping us with those word problems, the stories that have to do with math, where we read it first, then we draw a picture, and then we write our number model to go with it. Pictures can be so helpful in math. So the last one that we did was with those hands and with marbles, so that's what I'm gonna put up here 
as our example is we were able to see how many marbles were in one hand and then how many marbles were in the other. Okay, so I drew a picture and maybe I put three marbles in this hand and that would have left six marbles in the other hand because my total was nine, okay? So all of these things really helped me build my math fluency. But one of the most important ones we've been talking about is number pairs or partners. When we do this number bond, we know that the same number can be broken up into lots of different parts, right? So here I have five broken into four and one, but I know five can also be broken into two and three or five and zero. I can switch the number order. So instead of four and one, I could say one and four. We call those number pairs. So just by keeping those number pairs up in your head, right, and kind of you have to memorize them, right? But the more you practice, the easier it's going to get. Those number pairs are gonna help you do bigger math numbers later if you can remember the little ones right now. So I'm gonna write zero plus five equals five. I'm gonna write one plus four equals five. Two plus three equals five. Three plus two equals five. Uh, let's see, reverse it. Four plus one equals five, and five plus zero equals five. So all of these number partners and re remembering them or our number pairs will help us build that math fluency and get better at math. So I'm gonna do a real quick review of how I can use some of these things with the math that we've been working on. And then I'm gonna send out an activity to you on Seesaw. So. Let's swing you around here. Because one thing I thought would be super fun would be if Mrs. Peterson did a number dash for you. Because this is using those number pairs to build that fluency. Okay? So you can see that all of mine go to five. And I'm going to try and see how many I can do in 60 seconds. So. Miss Atwood, can you time me for 60 seconds? Yes. Okay. So, whenever you're ready, I want you to say, on your mark, get set, go. On your mark, get set, go. Okay. Four and one, make five. Five and zero, make five. Four and one, make five. Three and two, four and one. Three and two, three and two, one and four. Four and one, three and two, five and zero, four and one, two and three, three and two, four and one, five and zero, four and one, three and two, three and two, four and one, five and zero, five and zero, one and four, three and two, two and three. Done! 43. 43 seconds, friends. Woo! All right? And that was just using those same numbers over and over again. The more you practice them, the more you're going to be like our friend Dash here and be able to do them super quickly. And like I said, once you've got those ones down, you'll start to be able to do higher numbers. So if you want to do like 23 plus 32, you know your answer is going to be 55 because they have the same little parts to them that you did when you added them to five, you know, when they were just small numbers, okay? So that's one example of using number pairs for our math fact fluency. And I feel bad that it kind of gives you this funky colors here, but it's kind of cool, all right? So the other thing that we're gonna go over today is the strategy we were practicing yesterday, which was to count on just one more. So I'm gonna pull up this problem right here. Okay, this is gonna be a real quick review of what we did yesterday and then we're gonna jump on Seesaw. So it says, imagine adding one more backpack to the picture. Then write the numbers to match how many backpacks there will be. Okay, so I actually have to erase all these other numbers. There we go. 
from our number dash, okay? So, how many backpacks are there right now? Well, I've got a full top row, so I'm gonna say five, and then I'm gonna count on six, seven. So I know one part of my number bond is gonna be seven, and the other part is gonna be one, because that's what I'm adding is just one more. So I'm gonna draw one more backpack. And it doesn't have to be the prettiest backpack in the world. Okay, and then I'm gonna say, hmm, if I was counting, and I was going out loud, five, six, seven, and I wanted to go just one more, what number would come next? Seven, you got it, eight. So when I'm being a mathematician and I'm trying to solve math problems, one strategy is to know if you're ever adding one, it's like counting up just one more. So one more than seven is eight, which means, and I gotta fill in the numbers to make this sentence true, if I started with seven and I added one more, that would be equal to eight, okay? So that's the end of our math lesson today. We will continue to work really hard on these addition strategies, these decomposing numbers when we come back from intercession, okay? But I wanted you to be able to see our poster one more time because you're gonna be off for two weeks. I wanted your brain to remember some ways that you can be practicing math over the intercession. Just keep going with those number partners. Try and break apart two, try and break apart four, try and break apart six, you know, all the way up to 10. If you can remember those number partners, your brain is going to get super smart at math. So I hope you have a great rest of your day. We'll see you later.